In Battleground, Georgia, it could all come down to voters in Atlanta and its suburbs. Megan Casella joins us right now from Atlanta. That's where the business climate in the state could decide the election. Megan, good morning. Hey, good morning, Becky. So the candidates have been pretty narrowly focused on the Atlanta metro area here in this final stretch. And while job growth and business growth have been booming in recent years, that should typically help an incumbent. But the polls have been pretty, tilted pretty heavily towards Donald Trump. And one reason seems to be that that strong economy, it just isn't working for everyone. Atlanta is about one third black. It has the highest concentration of black business owners of anywhere in the country. And the polls show that those black voters, they're just not backing Harris at the same level that they were backing President Biden when he won the state four years ago. If you look at the current Biden-Harris administration and even how the economy is going, it's not that great for the black community. Naturally, with the Democrats being in power now, there's going to be some kind of effect to that. And that's, that's, I think that has definitely something to do with it. Now, that's not the only story here in Atlanta. Remember, this state was decided by less than 12,000 votes four years ago. And the key to Biden's victory was winning not just Atlanta proper, but also the suburban counties that surround it. And perhaps no county was as influential as Gwinnett. We were in the county seat of Lawrenceville yesterday. It's the largest and the most diverse, the fastest growing of all of the counties that surround Atlanta. And it swung big for Biden by about 18 points back in 2020. But now Trump, in a big shift from his 2020 strategy, He's trying to compete exactly in these suburban areas. He was in Gwinnett last week, Cobb County before that. His goal is to compete there rather than in those more rural, more reliably Republican parts of the state where his margins are already huge. His goal is to flip Georgia back to red by losing the suburbs by less. And Becky, when we were out there yesterday, we were talking with voters and we heard a little bit of everything. We heard Trump support and Harris support. We heard from people who were planning on staying home next week and not voting in November. And it showed us not just a little bit of what on voters' minds out in Lawrenceville, but also gave us a glimpse of just how narrow the margins could once again be here on election night. Becky? Megan, that has to be the key, though, for, for both of these candidates trying to get out the vote. Um, it depends on who shows up at the polls, how much of a turnout they can get from their base. Absolutely. And turnout has been really big. Some 40 percent of Georgians have already cast a ballot in early voting. What went on in 2020, some concerns about voter fraud and that sort of thing might be propelling some of those early voting numbers. But they're way ahead of where they were four years ago. And the early analysis seems to make it seem like it's driven by Republicans, that they're the ones going to the polls in larger numbers than the Democrats were. That's a good sign for the Trump campaign. The Harris campaign might still have some catching up to do.